Hi, my name is Abby Lucas, and today I'll be presenting my research on hypertension in Haiti. Now, what exactly is hypertension? Hypertension is defined as an elevated blood pressure above 140 and above 90 for systolic and diastolic, respectively, or someone who's currently taking antihypertensive medications. Hypertension is also characterized as a non-communicable disease, and it affects nearly a quarter of the world's population. NCDs account for seven out of 10 deaths worldwide, and three-fourths of the, all these deaths are occurring in the developing world, indicating an increased burden in those countries. In response to these things, in 2010, World Health Organization and the United Nations made it their goal in Target 3.4 to reduce by one-third premature mortality from non-communicable diseases through prevention and treatment. Additionally, WHO member states have made extra commitments to reducing the prevalence of these NCDs by the year 2025. However, these goals cannot be accomplished without long-term studies investigating their management, particularly in the developing world, as there is less comprehensive data there given the lack of infrastructure and resources. Out of this, my research question was born, which is what are long-term and consistent methods to manage hypertension in the developing world? I chose to conduct my research in Haiti, one, because we have access through Corbin's medical mission trips, as well as the extremely high prevalence of uh, hypertension within the country. It is the leading cause of adult mortality, accounting for more than 20% of deaths within Haiti. This is due to a couple of reasons. One, the lack of medical infrastructure, as well as poor access to healthcare resources, and the prevalence of mobile clinics, despite their poor empirical evidence in support of their use, um, and their little to no follow-up and poor record keeping, which allows the chronic diseases to continue to flourish within the country. For our program, we implemented it within two rural communities in Haiti, Bon Cheval and Ballon. In order to qualify for our program, patients had to be hypertensive at least 26 years old, and agreed to only receive treatment through our program. The methodology for the sequential quantitative qualitative study involved training for the community health workers, informed consent for all research participants, monthly blood pressure checks, and biannual physician visits, as well as an electronic medical record system where all patient charts were kept, and the PI was blinded during analysis, and a two-way ANOVA was used for quantitative data analysis. We ended up with 13 participants, 11 females and two males. Uh, the average age was 60, average BMI was 27, and eight of our 13 participants were either overweight or obese. This table here kind of summarizes um, all of our demographic information, but I hit the most important things. This graph here shows that there was a positive correlation between BMI and elevated systolic pressure. Um, which matches the findings of many other similar studies. This shows the average initial and final blood pressures for all of our participants. At the beginning of the study, our patient's average was 160 over 101, which is definitely hypertensive. Um, and at the conclusion of being treated for 14 months, the average was 137 over 81. This graphic here shows that the decrease from beginning of end to our reporting period was significant. However, at the end, there were three participants who remained uncontrolled. And as you can see, that number went up a little bit from where their initial number was, which is due to one participant whose number spiked for some reason um, at his final reading, even though he had been controlled majority of the study. This leads into our quantitative findings regarding compliance. We found, we quantified, or we qualified um, non-compliance as one of or more of these three things, either misuse of their prescription, whether they're exceeding their dosage or discontinuing it for any reason, continued high dietary sodium intake, or three, the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. All participants had been educated about these things um, and made aware of the consequences of continuing to do them. To summarize our findings, there's a significant decrease in blood pressure, a positive correlation between BMI and hypertension, and compliance was found to be an issue in managing hypertension. 
the recommendations that we would make at the end of this pilot program would be the importance of ongoing patient education and consistent follow-up and accountability. We found that compliance became less of an issue with continued education and the longer the program went on. As this is a pilot program, uh, there is not enough empirical evidence to recommend widespread implementation of similar programs, but our findings were positive enough to recommend similar programs and research be conducted in order to further evaluate the efficacy of a similar program. The next step is to hopefully publish this paper this summer. The goal is to submit it for publication uh, in mid to late May. And a few special acknowledgements I'd like to make uh, would be one to Corbin University and the medical mission team, as well as Dr. Sarah Comstock and Empower Haiti Together, which is the program we partnered with to do this program. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them as in order to meet time limits, there's a lot of information I had to condense. Um, so just give me an email. Okay, thank you for your time. <laughs>